Good afternoon. We're Team B. I'm Bryden. That's Fag and that's Paul. Um, right now, it's an interesting time in our economy because oil is at a really low point since it's been in a lot of years. And lots of people are viewing it as a threat and a point we want to get out of. At the same time, other people are looking at it as a way of investing and looking for ways of future prosperity and growth. Hopefully, we can do that. And our recommendation to you, Mr. Sparks, is going to help you um, go forward with that prosperity and growth. Hopefully, we can all construct excellence. Now, what we recommend is that you purchase Vanguard equipment rentals and use those connections to diversify product offerings in times of uncertainty. The reason we want to do this is look for areas that are less dependent on oil. Right now, we go in construction, and we are in, located in Fort McMurray, which is an area very dominant by the oil industry and is seeing downturns. However, if you look towards forestry and agricultural industries as well, that'll help us um, diversify and be less dependent on one thing and move forward as an organization. Okay, so today I'm going to go through the situational analysis and um, kind of discuss the beginning alternatives. Paul's going to go a little deeper, discuss the issue analysis, and Megan's going to talk about recommendations and the best way to implement them for future growth. So, the oil market right now is very cyclical. Don't know where it's going to go every day or every year. It can change. Who knows? Maybe it'll go up to $100 a barrel tomorrow. But right now, it's low. <laughs> I work in the construction industry. It's dependent on the economy. So, in times of low point, people don't want to put more money into construction as of right now. But it's a not yet dominant industry by major players. It's high competition, and it's high price of equipment. We have to lease a lot of our things. That's a lot of risk going forward when you open up more stores, having to do those lease options. Those could be defaulted and cause us a lot of problems. Moving forward on our internal analysis, we have a strong brand image um, throughout Eastern Ontario and Quebec, Eastern Canada. And we're starting to build that brand image in Alberta, Fort McMurray. And we have a really good relationship with Komastu. Um, a Japanese manufacturer, we're um, almost more the exclusive side of offering their products in Alberta. However, we are very dependent on them as a supplier. Um, you know, if they ever go under or decide we're not a good fit, that could cause us a real problem. Um, management focus is on Ontario and Quebec, so if we expand too far and too quickly, we could lose that focus as an organization on what is bringing in money to the organization. Um, are a value-derived business, not through, we don't build things, uh, it's our organization, you guys know this, but through customer service, location, product offering, as well as bulk discounts. And that customer service is what needs to be focused on when we move forward in these changes. So the problems is how do we expand? Um, you know, expansion, it's a difficult thing to consider, and we have three main options, which we'll talk about in one second. And secondary issues is how are these gonna affect financial statements and financial reporting. So alternative, with three main options. One is get out of Fort McMurray, um, consider it to be too risky, too much going on. Um, that's one alternative. Number two is to purchase existing construction equipment rental change. Look at places that have been prosperous in the future and build connections deeper within the community. Our third option is to open our own equipment rental shops. Um, this option does not allow Camus to um, finan financing, and so we'd have to think of different ways to finance. I'm going to pass it off to Paul, who's going to talk about those analysis of those alternatives a little deeper. All right, thank you, Brian. Uh, so now we'll take a look at some of the alternatives available to your company to help you going forward in the future. Uh, so the first one that we were looking at was possibly selling our Fort McMurray branches. Uh, so we'll take a look at this. Uh, the benefits would be it hedges that future risk. Uh, Fort McMurray has been in a bit of a decline. It's a really heavily uh, dependent on the oil sands town. And with those low oil prices, a lot of those oil sands industries just aren't sustainable anymore. And so it might be a good idea to just get out of the market altogether. Um, it also mitigates those short-term losses. Uh, might not look good to our shareholders if over the next five years, our profits get lower and lower due to these Fort McMurray operations dragging us down, uh, even if the long-term potential is there. Uh, the risks, though, you do lose that future potential for that additional profitability you could get in the future um, if the oil price goes back up, and it's highly likely that one day the oil sands will once again be feasible. As well, you might see some community dissatisfaction due to the job loss created. Uh, a lot of people are look to the oil sands for employment, and simply shutting our doors might not make us look like that great of a company. 
Um, so we did some financial analyses here. Uh, so first off, we just took a look at the uh, unadjusted net present values that were provided um, for the uh, next five years, so 2015 up until 2019 there. And so we took an estimate and looked at what could we possibly get for our operations if we were to sell these Fort McMurray branches. Uh, we specified, typically we ask about six to seven times earnings for one of our operations, uh, but we were believing that we could maybe get three to five times because the oil prices were so low. So we used an average of four. Uh, we multiply that by our pre-tax earnings. We look at about a $4.8 million payment for these operations where we had to sell them. And the lost cash flows, uh, based on our projections for the next five years, are uh, growing at about 15% per year in revenues, um, expenses as well. We're looking at a loss of about $10.2 uh, million of those present values of those cash flows. And that's discounted at a rate of 2.7%, which is the uh, borrowing rate we can get from one of our uh, companies. Uh, so that gets us a net present value of negative $5.4 million. That's a loss if we get rid of these operations here. However, one thing we noticed was that we should make some adjustments to these operations, um, especially that 15% increase in revenue year over year, as it really doesn't seem feasible. Uh, we were noting that in 2015, revenues are expected to decline by a further 20%, and in 2016, an additional 10% there. And so we'll factor that into our next calculation in a second. Um, after 2016, we assume they'd remain at that, uh, those levels, that 70% level, uh, through 2017 to 2019. So we'll take a look at that as well. As well, the equipment lease and those repair and maintenance costs, uh, we adjusted them as well to better reflect a percentage of revenues. Uh, you know, as we're uh, renting out less products, um, it makes sense that our lease costs as well as our repair costs for those products are going to decrease as well. So we adjusted those. Salary expenses, we had also left flat at $1.2 million over those five years there. Uh, we increased it at a 3% per annum rate just to keep constant with inflation, provide a bit more realistic measure for us. Um, as well as those store yard and lease costs, we noticed that the uh, lease amount comes due at the start of 2016. And so there's four years there where we don't exactly know what the lease cost could be. Um, we estimated that you could see an additional 3% on top of that $50,000 $50, we were paying per month right now. And so we added that into our lease costs as well. And so when we take a look at this, uh, we can see our discounted cash flows changed quite a bit. We still got that uh, four times pre-tax earnings, same numbers before that, $4.8 million. But now we can see we're essentially losing uh, $0 in those cash flows because some of those negative and those positive numbers cancel out, uh, getting us essentially a net present value of selling our Fort McMurray operations based on a bit of a more realistic view uh, from what we think of about $4.8 million. So option two is acquiring some of our competitors. Uh, there were three competitors we took a look at. First was Transverse Rentals. Uh, great thing about this uh, company is it has a strong construction focus already. Um, it's really focused on rental as well, not so much selling the products. About 72% of their revenue came from the rental side of things. They also have a range of equipment, uh, so that would be very beneficial for our company to get those different types of products into our stores. Uh, risks, um, it's still in the construction industry and we're already essentially in that industry. Um, so you can see those fluctuations and essentially this alternative, one of the big risks we felt was that it's just more of the same. It's really just sticking in the current industries we've been in before and that we currently aren't doing so well and, and the future prospects aren't looking that great as well. Um, so we looked at the net present value for this alternative. Uh, we took the revenue for 2015, assuming that the uh, transverse had already uh, prorated that to that 80% margin for their projected future 2015 revenues based on that expected 20% decline in the oil industry. Uh, we also took the 2016 uh, which we came up with on our own, uh, put that down to 90%, so that's that 10% decline from before, and came up with these numbers here. The EBITDA for both 2015 and 2016, uh, same percentages as uh, Transverse had provided to us from before. Uh, for taxes, we assumed a 33% tax rate. That's what we're using in our organization. We assumed it would transfer over since uh, we are pretty similar as of right now. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the four times earnings for this organization is about $36 million to purchase them out. That's the same average four times earnings percentage. Um, so while we're going to lose about $89 million, or make about $89 million in cash flows over those next five years based on our estimates, uh, keeping our cash flows for uh, 2017 through 2019, the same as 2016, just to be sort of conservative there, uh, not overinflate this number. Uh, we also calculated out for us a maximum markup percentage. Uh, so essentially, if Transverse were to charge us 9.8 times uh, pre-tax earnings there, um, it would still make sense to essentially go with this option as we have a zero net present value. So it, depending on what that multiplier works out to, you could see up to 9.68 times uh, this alternative would still make sense. 
Uh, it's also the alternative to acquired Caledon Center benefits. They have uh, 20 locations already. They have some great connections with Caterpillar and Hitachi, companies we currently aren't involved with. Uh, so that's one opportunity there. Uh, risks, again, strong Fort McMurray focus. We're really already there. Again, this alternative looks um, a lot like more of the same as it's really focused on the oil side of things and being at Fort McMurray. And so we really wanted to make sure we did something different going forward in the future. Again, did another net present value calculation for this alternative. Uh, for both the revenue numbers, uh, same procedures as before. We assumed the 70% or sorry, the 80% for the 2015 year and brought that down to a further 10% for the 2016 year. Same method of calculating the EBITDA and the pre-tax profit there. Uh, one thing I should point out for the revenue number for both Caledon Center and the previous company I talked about, which I forgot to mention, uh, was we were also going to believe that uh, these companies would bring us our existing Fort McMurray stores if we were to buy them an additional $200,000 contribution margin uh, for each store we purchased. And so with the 20 stores from this Caledon Center here, that works out to a $4 million additional contribution margin. That's been factored into the revenue and was also factored into the previous calculation for their 15 stores. Uh, just a quick note for you there. Uh, this one as well, we got that uh, 7.93 uh, times maximum earning multiplier. So if they were to charge us that, we'd break even at zero. Uh, we're estimating a net present value of $67.18 million there. Finally, the uh, company we believe best uh, works for our organization is this Vanguard Equipment Rentals uh, company. Number one reason is because they have a strong forestry industry focus. And so what this will allow us to do is really to diversify our offerings. So we're not so dependent on oil or the construction prices associated with the uh, city's oil is uh, largely a part of, as we are now in Fort McMurray. And so by being able to expand into these new industries, we believe could be a really great strategy for our company in the future, as it allows us to essentially make connections with uh, new types of customers and to essentially hedge our risk. So we're not so reliant on that oil price there. Uh, they have partnerships with both Caterpillar and JCB, so some big construction companies we're not yet involved with. That's another benefit there. That's also an established company, been around since 1975, so strong history there. Um, risks, we don't really have much of an experience with forestry. Um, however, Vanguard Equipment Rentals has been in the industry for quite some time, and so we believe we could use their knowledge to our advantage. Um, so the revenue and the uh, EBITDA calculated just as before, including that $200,000 contribution margin, 33% um, tax rate as well, uh, four times pre-tax earnings works out to $32 million estimated cost for this alternative, and a 8.37 times pre-tax earnings markup is the maximum we could sustain. We're looking at about a $35.42 million net present value. And this is the alternative we recommend due to the uh, strong forestry industry focus, even though it does have a slightly lower net present value than some of the other alternatives. So the final option that was available was opening up some new stores. Benefits, it would be fully customizable to our needs. We could essentially open up the stores to do whatever we needed them to. Um, it also has a slower rollout of those stores and we can essentially ensure that we only open up maybe one or two new stores per year to ensure we can sustain this growth. Uh, the risks are we, we do have a very low initial return. Um, even over 10 years, as you'll see on the next slide, uh, the net present value is negative by about $170 million. Um, and so that's uh, one cause for concern that we were looking at. Um, it also does not advance our organization really. Again, it's just more of the same, sticking to that Fort McMurray and area, uh, area of operations there to earn our uh, money. So the opening the new stores, uh, we looked at an average annual profit increase of $2.48 million. It wasn't fully provided, but uh, from 2015 all the way up until 2025, I believe, uh, the average annual increase was about $2.5 million. Uh, so the present value of the annual investment, we're investing about $200 million in the first five years of our operations with these new stores and $10 million in the subsequent five years. So that results in an annual investment of uh, the present value of that annual investment over 10 years of $204 million. Again, that's at that 2.7% discount rate. And the cash flows were quite small due to the negative cash flows in the first four or so years. Uh, we assumed that these cash flows were attributable to the entirety of the stores which would be in operation at that time, and that these were not a per store cash flow number there. And so when we subtract those numbers, we can see over 10 years, the net present value of this option is about $180 million loss. Uh, over 20 years or even more, you could see that number become positive, uh, but we were really concerned about the low numbers in the first 10 years. And as you can see in five years as well, it's uh, $222 million loss there. 
Uh, so there were also some financial reporting concerns uh, that we had. Number one was the additional cost of Vanguard on our balance sheet. It'll be financed 70% by Komatsu for a $22.7 million liability there. Uh, this will increase, or sorry, decrease our debt equity ratio, which could be cause for concern for any bank covenants we may have. As well, we'll have to consolidate with these uh, companies we merge with. We're assuming it's a purchase of shares. Uh, so that'll be one thing we have to take a look at. So with that, we'll pass it off to Megan, who's gonna discuss our recommendation. Thanks, Paul. So just to go over the alternatives again, uh, we have the option of closing our current operations in Fort McMurray, purchasing an existing store, or uh, making our own. So what we would like to re recommend, as Paul has already stated, is to purchase that Vanguard equipment rental store. We think this is a great option just to diversify our risk. We know in the current uh, business structure, there is existing risk that oil might not have a long-term uh, growth. It is quite cyclical, as we would mentioned. So we think this is a great option to potentially optimize on those upturns, but it'll also diversify that risk. So our recommendation here, short term, we noticed that we wanted this recommendation chosen within the next three weeks. Therefore, we think that communicating with our governance, just to make sure everyone's okay with this option, is key to get a buy-in from our members. Also, just determining that optimal purchase price. As Paul had mentioned, there is a range for these prices, but we'd like to get the best deal possible. Um, also, investigate the organization. Uh, potentially, we'd like to see an audit here or some sort of assurance over those financial numbers, as well as we get legal advice on the purchase, as well as any inspections that might be necessary on their products. Uh, next, medium term, that would be within the six months. Uh, we'd like to make that offer, close that deal, and really get it operating within these businesses. Um, we just want to make sure that we also train the employees. <coughs> we know that when we're entering, uh, buying these new businesses, there might be issues uh, and conflict within the organization, but just make sure that new, those new employees know our culture and really know what we would like to offer uh, within our business. We would also like to bring in those Komatsu products. As Komatsu had stated, they are willing to give us uh, cash to fund this project, but they'd like to see their product within our stores. And we believe that uh, making a selection of two of those products is optimal, so we might have to select one that offers the best return through potentially a gross margin analysis. A uh, long term, we just want to monitor this market. Uh, Fort McMurray, we'd like to see how, how the oil is doing, uh, what the prices are like to make sure that maybe there's other opportunities for growth here, or maybe there isn't. Just being cognizant of these different elements to make sure it's best for our business. Um, we just like to make connections within this industry too. There might be opportunity to work with other small businesses and just really cultivate a great uh, community at Fort McMurray. And we just want to make sure also that we're really ensuring that we offer the latest technology. Uh, this could be a, this is a fast growing industry and we don't want to fall behind and uh, not be offering those great new technologies. So we did identify a few risks in this strategy, but we also identified mitigations. So first, uh, market decline in oil price. We never know in the future with green energy how our business is going to align with that oil business and maybe operating Fort McMurray won't be best, but uh, just entering those different markets as we stated in our strategy will able us to uh, mitigate that risk. Uh, competition risk, if say oil prices do jump back up, they might be flooding the market, we might have more competitors, but we just want to ensure that we emphasize what our product offering is and the value that we survive, provide with that customer service and that we provide differentiated products. Uh, employee issues, we want to make sure we get that buy-in, so just communicating our brand, as well as having proper training, as I have mentioned. Uh, and well, There's also the risk that uh, our relationship with Komatsu falters. Uh, we can mitigate that through just looking for other partnerships to not be so dependent on that organization. So just to conclude, we think this partnership is optimal for our organization because it diversifies our product offering. We're not just in oil, we could grow into other industries like forestry with this partnership and really make our business prosper in the future. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for listening to our presentation. I'll now open up to questions. Thank you. That concludes the presentation portion. Uh, the five minute answering session will now begin. Uh, I'll start off. So we're going to talk about the um, the highest debt. Vanguard's the one you picked, and uh, their debt to equity ratio is 150 percent. So they're going to add about 37 million dollars to our current consolidated debt 
On top of that, we're going to have to take on more debt to purchase them. Uh, have you put some thought into how we're going to fund our 30% of the acquisition? Uh, for sure. So we thought, uh, we weren't 100% sure about what our balance sheet was currently looking like at this point. Uh, we believe you could potentially sell any of our short-term investments or perhaps use some of our cash in order to purchase the company. Another thing we had thought of was we could, instead of purchasing the full 100% of the company, we could perhaps purchase uh, control over the company, perhaps 51%, uh, something like that, sort of easy financial burden. As you are correct, those uh, debt equity ratios are pretty high. And so by essentially having to finance less of a cost for that company, only the 50%, uh, could potentially reduce the amount of finance we have to obtain and put on our balance sheet as well. Thank you. I'll go. Um, I guess just with uh, buying these new locations, there's potentially some issues with how do we bring people into our culture, how do we train them, how do we have management over it, um, with all of our management currently being located in Eastern Canada. So, have we thought of how we want to address that? Right, so proper training is really important. Having people buy into the organization is going to save a lot of time and money. You don't want to have to rehire, it's very costly. So a good idea would be to bring in people who work in stores in Ontario and Quebec, bring them in, give the, the same sort of training that would happen um, and that should have happened um, during when our first few stores went under. Make sure that happens correctly so they buy into the culture and they can continue to grow with us together. really great you recognize the governance process and a quick decision to, to go back to the board and committee. Um, any sense of, of uh, foreshadowing questions you might get from them, one being uh, what's the downside to the downside to the overall business and what's the size of this transaction compared to the overall entity? Uh, again, we'd have to take a look at that balance sheet to find out what the size of the transaction is. Uh, to the entity there. Uh, but we believe that this is a pretty good alternative, helps us diversify into those uh, new types of product lines, and ensure we're not so reliant on those oil prices in the future there. And so I think that'll really help appeal to the board, that we can almost mitigate some of that shareholder risk in the future, uh, rather than uh, being so dependent on a single industry and a single sort of area of the globe, uh, we could maybe get our name out there into uh, additional parts of Canada. Um, I guess, how do you see the Komatsu brand fitting in with the CAT and the JV? Um, how do we see that transition happening? Do we see customer preferences leading toward the CAT brand? Um, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so um, it's kind of industry norm to only have two of the main players. We really didn't want to upset Komatsu because so much of our uh, business value is derived from that partnership. They, they're they really active in the partnership with those um, strategy <coughs> meetings that we're having happening. So we would like to just really monitor that and make sure that the Komatsu brand is not really falling behind potentially the cat brand or whichever other one we choose. Um, and we also chose that just because it kind of operates in other industries. So although it might be a direct competitor in oil, it also has just those other product lines so that potentially within our business we could say, um, you know, compensate salespeople based on, you know, Komatsu would maybe be a high percentage just to keep those individuals happy. But then we would also be selling the other brand in those other service areas to really make sure that uh, partnership is really strong. Uh, just to add there, it's stated in the case that we would take a brand out in exchange for the Komatsu brand, and we would do that and we look at what the market offerings would as kind of preferred throughout the industry and our buyers and using that consideration, as well as uh, gross profit margins, using those considerations. That would be obviously the worst one would be dropped. I'll just have a quick one here. So your uh, Vanguard, uh, you said your total, you could go up to 8.32, I believe, uh, percent multiplier. I think four, they're probably not going to take it. They're not looking to sell. Um, so in your analysis, when you're looking in that, would you pay up to that 8.3? Or what's your kind of max that you were looking at that you would pay for Vanguard? The cost for the 8.3 was we wanted to calculate what would be the most amount of money we could spend and have a zero net present value. Obviously, we don't want to do that, but just so we know, um, up to maybe a, a six times multiplier. Given oh, sorry, we are out of time. That concludes the question.